Hello all, today we are going to discuss unit 4 in analog and digital electronics. Uh, then unit 4 is combinational logic circuits. Topics include basic theorems and properties of Boolean algebra, canonical and standard forms, digital logic gates, the map method, product of some simplification, don't care conditions, NAND and NOR implementation, exclusive OR function, binary adder subtractor, decimal adder, binary multiplier, magnitude comparator, decoders, encoders and multiplexer. So, let us discuss about each and every topic in a great detail. Before going to uh, combinational circuit, uh, let us discuss about analog and digital circuits. So, electronic circuits and systems are of two kinds. The first one is analog circuits and the second one is digital circuits. And analog circuits are those in which the voltages and currents vary continuously through the given range. They can take infinite values within the specified range. For example, the output voltage from an audio amplifier might be any one of the infinite values from minus 10 volts and plus 10 volts at any particular instant of time. Other examples of analog devices include signal generators, radio frequency transmitters and receivers, power supplies, electric motors and speed controllers. Now what are digital circuits? A digital circuit is one in which the voltage levels assume a finite number of distinct values. Each voltage level in a practical digital system can actually be a narrow band or range of voltages. These are often called switching circuits because the voltage levels in a digital circuit are assumed to be switched from one value to another instantaneously. That is, the transition time is assumed to be zero. Digital systems are used extensively in computation and data processing, control systems, communication and measurement. Digital systems have a number of advantages over analog system. They are as follows. Digital systems are easier to design. The switching circuits in which there are only two voltage levels, high and low, are easier to design. The exact numerical values of voltages are not important because they have only logical significance. Only the range in which they fall is important. In analog systems, signals have numerical significance, so their design is more involved. Information storage is easy in digital circuits. There are many types of semiconductor and magnetic memories of large capacity which can store digital data for periods as long as necessary. Accuracy and precision are greater. Digital systems are much more accurate and precise than analog systems because digital systems can easily expand it to handle more digits by adding more switching circuits. Analog systems will be quite complex and costly for uh, some for the same accuracy and precision. Digital systems are more versatile. It is fairly easy to design digital systems whose operation is controlled by a set of stored instruction called the program. Any time the system operation is to be changed, it can be easily accomplished by modifying the program. Even though analog systems can also be programmed, the variety of available operations is severely limited. Digital circuits are less affected by noise. Unwanted electrical signals are called as noise. Noise is unavoidable in any system. Since in analog system, the exact values of vol voltages are important and in digital system, only the range of values is important. The effect of noise is more severe in analog system. In digital system, noise is not critical as long as it is not large enough to prevent us from distinguishing a high from a low. More digital circuitry can be fabricated on IC chip. The fabrication of digital ICs is simpler and economical than that of analog ICs. Moreover, 
higher densities of integration can be achieved in digital ICs than in analog ICs because digital design does not require high value capacitors, precision resistors, inductors and transformers like analog design. Reliability is more, digital systems are more reliable than analog systems and the limitations of digital techniques are as follows. Even though digital techniques have a large number of advantages, they have only one major drawback. The digital systems are not continuous, yet they have to deal with analog data sometimes. It is impossible for a system that is discrete by definition to sample a continuous signal and retain all of its information. So this is all about analog and dig digital circuits and we have seen the advantages of digital circuits over analog circuits. So now let us discuss about logic gates in detail. There are basically two types of logic gates. The first one is basic gates and the second one is universal gates. In addition to basic gates and universal gates, we have special purpose gates. By using basic gates, we can design any type of gates that is universal gates and special purpose gates. Basic gates are of three types. The first one is AND gate, second one is OR gate and the third one is NOT gate. So let us see about all the gates in detail. AND gate, the first one is AND gate, it has two or more inputs and one output. This is the symbol of AND gate, it performs multiplication operation of the inputs given to it. So we need to write in this flow itself, we need to write about the number of inputs and outputs to a gate, we need to write its symbol, then boolean function truth table and the cases that we observe from the truth table. This is the symbol of AND gate, it has two inputs A and B and the output is denoted with Y. The boolean function is Y is equal to A into B as it performs multiplication operation of the inputs given to it. The truth table is as follows, as we have two inputs there are four possible combinations that is 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0 and 1, 1 and the output y is equal to a into b. So if we perform the multiplication of 0 into 0, we will get the output as 0. If we perform the multiplication of 0 into 1, then we will get the result or output as 0. If we perform the multiplication of 1 and 0, then we get the answer as 0. If we perform the multiplication of 1 and 1, then we get the result or output as 1. So from the truth table, we can observe uh, the cases as follows. If we apply both inputs as low, it means if we apply 0, 0 as A and B, then we get the output as low. Yes, that is true. We, we have applied two inputs as zeros and we got the output as 0. The case 2 is if we apply any one of the input as low, we get the output as low. If we apply any one of the input as low, we will get the output as low. Observe second and third case. 0 is one of the inputs to this. So we got the output as low. And the case 3 is if we apply both the inputs as high, if we apply 1 and 1 to A and B, then we get the output as high. The second gate is OR gate. It has two or more inputs and one output. The symbol of OR gate is this one. You need to remind, remember all the symbols of all the gates properly. So A and B are the inputs given to this OR gate and the output is Y. The boolean function is Y is equal to A plus B. So it adds the inputs given to it. The truth table is as follows. A, B and Y is equal to A plus B. You have to mention the inputs and you have to mention the outputs above A and B and above Y in the truth, B, A, in the truth table. And here also we have two inputs and with two inputs we will have four possible combinations. So 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0 and 1, 1. The outputs are if we perform the addition operation of 0 and 0, we will get the output as 0. If we perform the output, uh, if we perform the addition operation of 0 and 1, we will get the output as high. If we perform the addition operation of 1 and 0, we will get the output as high. And if we perform the addition operation of 1 and 1, here also the output will be high. 
the cases that we observe from this truth table are as follows if we apply both inputs as low then we get the output as low see in the first case we have applied 0 and 0 then we got the output as 0 and 0 if any one of the input is high if any one of the input is given as 1 then we have we have observed that the output is also 1 so we can say that if any one of the input is high then the output will be high then let us go for third gate that is not gate not gate is also called as inverter or complementary function because it will invert the input given to it and it has only one input and one output the symbol of not gate is this one a buffer with bubble in front of it so a is the input given to it and y is the output the boolean function is y is equal to a complement or y is equal to a bar the truth table of not gate is as follows the inputs are as we have only one input we will have two possible combinations that is 0 or 1 so for 0 we will get the output as 0 complement that is 1 and if we give the input as 1 we will get its complement that is 0 so the case that we observe from this truth table are if the input applied is high then the output will be low if the input applied is low then the output will be high so the next type of gates are universal gates we have two types of universal gates that is NAND and NOR gates the universal gates are NAND and NOR gates by using these gates we can construct any type of logic design by using NAND gate we can design NOT gate, AND gate, OR gate, NOR gate, XOR gate, XNOR gate any type of gate will be implemented by using this NAND gate and also by using NOR gate we can implement any type of gates so these gates are called as universal gates let us see about NAND gate in a great detail the NAND gate NOT AND gate has two or more inputs and one output the output of AND gate is given to the NOT gate in order to obtain the NOT NAND gate yes the output of AND gate if we give the output of AND gate to a NOT gate we will get NAND gate the NOT gate is called inversion or bubbled indication so the symbol of NAND gate is this one so if I give a if I give the inputs to an AND gate we will get y is equal to a into b so if I give that y is equal to a into b to a NOT gate I will get a into b whole complement that is y whole complement or we can write this symbol we can we can club up these two gates and we can write a bubble in front of this AND gate so that will become a NAND gate so this is the symbol of a NAND gate and the boolean function for NAND gate is y is equal to a into b bar the truth table is a b are the inputs and y is equal to a into b bar is the output so for two inputs we will have four possible combinations if a and b are 0 0 then the output is 0 into 0 that is 0 whole complement and we will get 1 here 0 into 1 that is 0 whole complement and we will get 1 here 1 into 0 whole complement that is 0 complement we will get 1 here 1 into 1 whole complement that is we will get 0 here so from the truth table we can write the cases like this if any of the input is low then the output is high if both the inputs are high then the output is low then the next type of universal gate is NOR gate NOR gate or NOT OR gate has two or more inputs and one output by using this we can construct basic gates same as NAND gates by using NOR gate also we can construct basic gates so the symbol for NOR gate is as follows for an OR gate if we place a NOT in front of it then it will perform the NOR operation so, see for a, a for this OR gate we are giving A and B as the input and Y is A plus B if I give a NOT gate here A plus B whole bar will be the output so by clubbing up these two gates we can just simply place a bubble in front of this OR gate to, to make it a NOR gate 
So, A and B are the inputs and Y is the output and Y is equal to A plus B whole bar is the Boolean function for this NOR gate. So, the truth table is A and B are the inputs and Y is equal to A plus B whole bar is the output. We know with two inputs we will have four possible combinations that is 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0 and 1, 1. So, if we add 0 and 0, we will get 0. If we complement it, 0 complement is nothing but 1. Then if we add 0 and 1, we will get 1 and 1 complement is 0. If we add 1 and 0, we will get 1 and 1's complement is 0 again. If we add 1 and 1, we will get 1 and 1's complement is 0 again. From the truth table, we can observe and write the cases as follows. If any one of the input is high, then the output is low. If both the inputs are low, then the output is high. Then let us move to the special purpose gates. The special purpose gates are of two types. The first one is XOR gate and the second one is XNOR gate. So, XOR gate is also called as exclusive OR gate. It has two or more inputs and one output. The symbol of XOR is as follows. A and B are the inputs to it and Y is the output. The Boolean function for XOR gate is Y is equal to A XOR B. The formula is A bar B plus B bar A. And the truth table is as follows. Here also we have two inputs and with the two inputs we have four possible combinations. If we perform XOR operation of all these, we will get like this Y is equal to A XOR B. For 0 and 0, we will get XOR operation as 0. For 0 and 1, we get 1. For 1 and 0, we get 1. And for 1 and 1, we get 0. So, if you observe this truth table carefully, this XOR gate is detecting odd number of 1s. If odd number of 1s are present as A and B, then the output is high. You observe. So, 0 and 0, there are no 1s. In 1 and 1, there are even number of 1s. Whereas in these two cases, second case and third case, only 1 is the input, 0 and 1 and 1 and 0. So, there are odd number of 1s in this. So, it is detecting and it is providing the output as high. So, XOR gate is also called as odd 1s detector as it is detecting the odd number of 1s and providing the output as high. So, we observe uh, the cases as follows from the truth table. If both the inputs are low or both the inputs are high, then the output will be low. If any one of the input is high, then the output is high. You can add one, one more point here that is XOR gate is also called as odd ones detector. And the next type of special purpose gate is XNOR gate, exclusive NOR gate. It has one or more inputs and one output. The symbol for XNOR gate is same as XOR gate, but we need to place a bubble in, in front of it. The Boolean function is Y is equal to A XOR B whole complement and the symbol for XNOR gate is like this, a dot encircled by it and A XNOR B is this. In, in this we can represent A X nor B. The formula for A X nor B is A bar B bar plus A B. So, the truth table is as follows A B and Y is equal to A X nor B. So, the truth from the truth table we can observe the cases like if both the inputs are low then the output will be high. See, see here if the both the inputs are low we gave 0 and 0 as the inputs and the output we got it has high. The second case is if both the inputs are high, last one, both the inputs are high, then the output is high. If any one of the input is high, then the output is low. If any one of the input is high or if any one of the input is low, then the output is 0, 0, that is low. Next, let us see the laws of Boolean algebra. The basic laws of Boolean algebra are commutative law distributive law, associative law. So, let us see about all these laws in a great detail. In a commutative law, we have law 1 that is A plus B is equal to B plus A. It states that the order in which the variables are odd, it means A plus B. 
makes no difference in the output the order in which the variables are ordered makes no difference in the output so i can add a plus b or i can add in this way also b plus a the both outputs will be same once again i read this it states that the order in which the variables are ordered make no difference in the output that is a or b is equal to b or a so let us write the truth table for a plus b and also for b plus a and let us observe the final result a b a plus b so with two inputs we will have four possible combination 0 0 0 1 1 0 1 and 1 1 if i add these two uh, that is a plus b 0 0 0 plus 0 is 0 0 plus 1 is 1 1 plus 0 is 1 and 1 plus 1 is 1 let us write the truth table for b plus a also here also we have two inputs so we'll have four possible combination so b plus a 0 plus 0 is 0 1 plus 0 is 1 0 plus 1 is 1 and 1 plus 1 is 1 so if you observe this last columns a plus b and b plus a both the columns are same so it states that the order in which the variables are ordered makes no difference in the output that is a or b is equal to b or a the second law in commutative law is a into b is equal to b into a so it states that the order in which the variables are added now we have to multiply the inputs the order in which the variables are added makes no difference in the output that is a and b is equal to b and a so let us write the truth table for both the cases first let us write the truth table for a into b as we have two inputs we will have four possible combinations 0 0 0 1 1 0 and 1 1 so 0 into 0 gives 0 0 into 1 0 1 into 0 0 1 into 1 is 1 let us multiply b and a so 0 into 0 gives 0 1 into 0 gives 0 0 into 1 gives 0 and 1 into 1 gives 1 if you observe the truth tables in both the cases the output is same so a into b is equal to b into a so these laws can be extended to any number of variables here we have considered only two variables a and b we can also consider three variables four variables five variables for all variables this this will be true so a plus b plus c is equal to b plus a plus c that is equal to c plus a plus b and that is equal to b plus c plus a and so on similarly a b c d is equal to b a c d is equal to c a b d is equal to b c a d and so on the second law is associative law in this law 1 statement is given as follows a plus b plus c is equal to a plus b plus c so it states that in ordering of several variables the result is same regardless of grouping of the variable so we are multiply we are adding the variables here so in any way we can group these variables we will get the result as same so if i add b plus c first and then we will if we add it to a the result will be same if we add a plus b first and then if we add it to c let us see with the truth table you need to draw the gates also so b plus a b plus c with an or gate and then we will add the result with a this will give us a plus b plus c this is similar to a plus b plus c so let us observe in the truth table so a b c are the three inputs with three inputs we will have total eight possible combinations that is from 0 to 7 0 0 0 0 0 1 0 1 0 0 1 1 1 0 0 1 0 1 1 1 0 1 1 1 1 0 1 and 1 1 1 1 so first let us add b and c so b plus c if we add 0 plus 0 0 0 plus 1 1 1 plus 0 1 1 plus 1 1 Zero plus zero 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 plus one 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 plus zero one and one plus one is one. Now let us add this b plus c with a. So we will get a plus b plus c as follows. If I add the first column and the fourth column, zero plus zero will give us zero. Zero plus one will give us one. Next zero plus one will give us 
1 0 plus 1 will give us 1 again and 1 plus 0 will get 1 1 plus 1 we will get 1 1 plus 1 we will get 1 and 1 plus 1 we will get 1 finally so let us observe this a b c are the inputs and if we add a plus b first and then if we add the the result is added to c then let us observe whether these both two tables are same or not let us add a and b first so 0 plus 0 gives us 0 0 plus 0 gives us 0 0 plus 1 gives us 1 0 plus 1 gives us 1 1 plus 0 gives us 1 1 plus 0 gives us 1 1 plus 1 gives us 1 and 1 plus 1 gives us 1 so we have added a and b then we need to add this column with c so 0 plus 0 gives us 0 1 plus 0 gives us 1 0 plus 1 gives us 1 1 plus 1 gives us 1, 0 plus 1 gives us 1, 1 plus 1 gives us 1, 1 plus 0 gives us 1, 1 plus 1 gives us 1. So, if we observe last columns in both the truth tables, they are similar. So, law 2 is A into B into C is equal to A into B into C. So, we need to multiply the inputs. So, the way the order in which the, mul um, the variables are multiplied makes no difference in the output. That is a statement to uh, law to statement. So, A and B using AND gate will multiply this and then we will multiply the result with C A into B into C that is similar to A into B into C. Let us observe that with the, the truth table. So, as we have 3 inputs, we will have 8 possible combinations that is from 0 to 7, A, B, C are the inputs 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0 1, 0, 1, 0, 0, 1, 1, 1, double 0, 1, 0, 1, 1, 1, 0 and 1, 1, 1 are the inputs. So, if we multiply A and B first, then we will get 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 1 and 1. So, if we multiply this A and B column with C, then we will get 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0 and 1. Let us observe this truth table. As we have 3 inputs, we will have 8 possible combinations. Here first we are multiplying B and C. So, if we multiply 0 and 0, we will get 0, 0 and 1, 0, 1 and 0, 0. 1 and 1 1 0 and 0 0 0 and 1 0 1 and 0 0 1 and 1 1 then next in the next step we need to multiply the first column and fourth column a into b into c we get 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 and 1 so if you observe both the truth tables they are similar the next law is distributive law so, distributive law is this one A into B plus C is equal to this is multiplied A into B plus A into C. It states that ORing several variables and adding the result with single variable ORing several variables that is adding several variables and multiplying with the single variable is same as adding the result with single variable with each of the several variables and or in the product. So, A into B plus C is equal to A into B plus A into C. So, this is the part 1 of unit 4 that is combinational logic circuit. I will be uploading part 2 of unit 4 shortly and we will cover all the remaining topics in that part 2. Thanks for watching.